My copy of Tarao no Doskoe Ozumo gives me one of the weirder Famicom mysteries I've come across. I happen to have a box copy of this one, and with the manual, there's a sticker on it covering up some text. What is the terrible secret that Jalico was trying to hide? I've got no clue. It's hard to remove stickers from paper after all, and even if I hold it up to a light, there's a lot of text on the next page that interferes with it. The world may never know the answer to this mystery. Digging into the title a little bit here, Doskoi is a chant that sumo wrestlers use. It doesn't have any meaning past that in Japanese. It's just a stereotypical sumo wrestler exclamation. The Tarao, however, is Tarao Sunefumi. He was one of the biggest names in sumo wrestling at the time. So this wasn't a matter of just licensing any random wrestler for the game. As for the game itself, there's three different modes. You can compete against another player, of course. There's also a tournament mode where you can struggle to raise yourself through the ranks. That tournament mode is actually a stripped-down version of the RPG mode. The RPG mode is really why you'd want to play the game. In RPG mode, you wander a map of Japan, fighting random encounters with other sumo wrestlers, and building up experience points in order to buy additional moves. Your ultimate goal is to defeat all of the wrestlers at the rings around the country. Once you clear all of them, you go to a grand tournament where you can start raising your rank. The same tournament that you could have just gone to if you had picked it from the main menu. When you defeat a wandering sumo wrestler, they leave an item behind, and these items are very important. To be able to board a ship and get between the islands, you have to have a ticket. Another item that could be dropped are these brown lumpy tiles. They're used on board ships when you encounter pirates. You have to select a tile that will mate with the pirate's tile, though you can't see what the pirate's tile is until after you've selected. Get it wrong and you go back to the start. The coin is just additional experience, and the sandals allow you to take an item from the mountains. These locations will offer you six choices, and you just pick one at random. You have to have a scroll to enter a shop, and at these shops you hit right and left to choose what special move you're going to equip, and then pick them out from this menu. It's not really a shop in the sense that you're buying the skills, it's more that you have a maximum number of points of skills that you can equip, and you can choose them here. You start out with 250 points. Win or lose, you get points for every fight, and you get a lot more points for defeating enemies that are higher rank than you. That's actually a major problem with the game. You rank up in the sumo world much more quickly than you power up your abilities. So what people do is they intentionally lose fights. Staying at a lower rank means they get more experience points. And then once they've built up a bit, then they win their advancement fights. The way that the sumo matches work is similar to the real thing. You need to either get the other wrestler out of the ring, or get them on the ground. The A button will do slaps, and while you're in a grapple, pressing the B button in a direction will do a special move. Those are the ones that you have to buy and equip at the store. It's not just one button push, you really have to mash the buttons to get anything done. If you're doing a special move and you're mashing the button, you could start flashing, which will indicate that you've got extra power in that move. The bars below the match aren't health, they're your current power and you'll lose it and recover it over the course of the fight. If your power is higher than your opponent's, then the easiest way to win is to just walk up to them, keep pushing into them, and mashing the A button. Your slaps will knock them back every couple of seconds, and it makes the whole thing trivial. Otherwise, you'll need to wear them down with some wrestling moves. And despite the pricing, there are some cheaper moves that are just outright better than the expensive ones. There's one throw in particular that's available right from the start that makes it really easy to cheese your way through fights, which makes the sumo wrestling in Torao no Doskoi Ozumo really unfun to play. The bouts are either trivially easy or they just drag on and they're still not that difficult. There's not much you can do beyond mash the button as hard as you can. This game desperately needed a more involved fighting system. If you're getting a sumo game, the sumo matches have to be good. Not that the RPG elements are any good either. Those seem to exist mainly to stretch the game out. The experience points that you get for each battle are so low, 
you're going to have to grind for a long time to buy any special ability. For all of these reasons, this game is not well regarded. But one of the more amusing complaints I saw was that Tarao's special ability by default is good throwing, when actually he was known for bad throwing. Okay, bad throwing is actually a type of throwing in sumo, not a statement of quality, but I still found it funny. The only real positive that this game has is that it really uses the sound chip that Jalico had and fills the game with speech samples. Overall, Torao no Dosuke o Sumo was a pretty big disappointment for me. A sumo RPG? Yeah, absolutely I want to play that. And despite that, none of its systems work well. It almost feels like they slapped on the RPG segment because the game was too thin otherwise. I think this is the worst sumo game on the Famicom. And considering the one that we haven't seen is a Gundam game, that's pretty bad. <laughs>